Good morning and welcome to the Charlesy and Persco show brought to you by White Up and Bush Live on Facebook and also YTV. My name's Anton Persco. I'm joined here with Mark Childs. Good morning, Childsy. Morena Persco. Well, look, club rugby in the Wairarapa is on the rise and I can't wait for the games today. Yeah, cool, Childsy. Now, you're gonna, the weather looks a bit grim out there today. Give us a little update on the weather. Yeah, we're going to get a nor'wester today uh, and expecting some rain. Uh, and look, some of these fields might cut up a bit, so definitely not hot and fast. <laughs> so I think there could be some changes and some tactics today with the club rugby. Cool. Now, the Pick the Score competition. This is jackpotted to $1,000. Thank you very much, uh, much, Mark Childs and Ray White, for putting this up. Uh, we'll be covering with you soon the, the match of the round. There's $1,000 up for grabs, and uh, you could take this home today. Now, the Lone Star Legend Award that we gave away last week, Childsy, this was a really difficult one to choose, but you've come up with a uh, winner. Yeah, we had some great applicants, and it's always hard to choose, but look, I feel Michelle Beaver from the Maris Club. There's Michelle. Round of applause. Good work, Michelle. She's been at the Maris Club for nigh on 30 years. 30 years. Behind the scenes, and she is an absolute legend of the Maris Club. Um, Anton, tell us a little bit more well, look, about it. Well, uh, look, I played my first game for the Mighty Maris Midgets back in 1985, and I remember uh, after our first game, Michelle had saveloys, a uh, little of those little mini pies and that for us. And look, if you go down to the Maris Club rooms as well now, Michelle is still doing the same thing. So, Michelle Beaver, you are the Lone Star Legend of the Week. You've got a hundred dollar voucher there at Lone Star, so go and see Tom and Michelle at the Lone Star, and thanks for your support, guys. Very well deserved, Michelle. Good on you. Now, Charlesy, we're going to go through a couple of photos that uh, have been in the world of Facebook uh, during the week about Club Rugby. First of all, Alistair Payne here. What's going on in this photo? Well, Payne over there, he's with the donk, uh, Grayson Evans. Look, they're looking down at something there. We can't quite figure it out, but what we think they're doing is they're, they're picking the score. Picking the score competition. Mm. I reckon they're doing a late entry. So um, that, that's what we came up with that photo. It looks a bit strange. Now, this one, Charlesy, this is Coaching 101. At its best. Well, this is you giving yourself some uh, air time. But look, oh, you, you're having a rant to the good and first 15. But no, none of them are looking at you. They're actually no. ignoring the hell out no, of you. No, no, I'm giving so, them. I'm, <laughs> we're under the sticks. I'm giving them a really good blast. And well, if you they, look at the photo, they're all just looking in different angles. So anyway, moving on. Now, this one, this is the photo of the week. <laughs> Andrew Douglas Smith. Look, this is, a, <laughs> he's not even in contact in this photo. Well, he's not. He's looking like he's trying to have a crap, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Look, <laughs> I don't know, he should be using that for his latest real estate photo, maybe yep. all those signs. He's well, look, um, Andrew, you have actually have won the photo of the week and you've got a new set of business cards coming your way with this on the front of it from the Charles Ambrose Show. Curious of Ray White. Only a face a mother could love. Now, Tavita Isaac. Tavita Isaac crossed the try line this week and he actually didn't knock it on and scored. Nah, uh, fair grounding. Well yep, done, Tavita. Fair grounding. Well done. Well done, Tavita. Now, Charlesy, tell us a little bit about this photo. Well, because look, you've got to zoom in here. It is in we'll the showers. In. There, there'll be no names involved. But what it is is, is an actual example of what's called a sneen. So <laughs> a sneen was very popular in the 1980s. You wore your jeans and you wore sneakers. So it was called a sneen. Now, further down the season, we'll be introducing uh, a, a week of sneens, uh, which we will we'll let you know about. There'll be prizes up for grabs, but a great sneen shot there we picked yeah, up during so the Yeah, so I week. think it's, we're going to do 12th of June, which is the... 12th of June is the uh, the Lane Pen Cup final and, weekend. And uh, all club players and supporters have to um, to support their well, so sneens. Support your sneens, and the best sneen will win an amazing prize. Watch cool. out for that. Now, we're about to cross over to our undercover field agent, um, Chris oh, look Cogdale. Him look, look at, at him. him. Incognito. Yeah. Incognito, clearly looking more like someone from a mafia. Uh, doesn't want to be recognised on the sideline. Getting grief for the three, two, ones and the TA. Look, that's a, that's Chris Cogdale incognito. Okay, now uh, we're, let's cross go, go to Chris um, and also the college rugby expert. He's going to give us an update on the first fifteen competition. Morning, well, Coggy. Yeah, good morning, boys. Um, yeah, from last week, uh, Wadded Upper College, they had a tough task. They were up against uh, St. Bernard's, had to win it to get into the Premier Division. Unfortunately, it went down 42-14, so they're playing Prem 2 in Wellington this year. No no shame in that, but it's the first time in about four years that they won't be in that top division. Uh, they kick off against St. Pat's Silverstream, second 15 away uh, down in Silverstream this afternoon. Uh, Rathkeel lost 38-8 to uh, St Paul's, I think it was, from Hamilton. They play St Peter's Cambridge at Rathkeel today at midday. So that's a bit of a wrap there, but a bit of a shame about Wycombe not making that top division. Yeah, look, I've, I've been talking to Jonathan Tanner, the Wycombe coach, and look, I, I 
the feeling is the team is is competing for a, a long time in these games, but uh, just the physicality, I think the size difference of these teams down there in Prem 1 is, is telling. Um, but look, make the most of the rest of the season, lads. Um, it's all there in front of you now. Yeah, Coggy. Now, while I've got you here as well, let's talk about an article that you posted away from um, First 15 Rugby, uh, an article you posted on Wednesday. You really gave the referees a really good rap here. Where did this come from? Because it sort of, the tone was a little bit heated from you. Well, it wasn't really heated. I just wanted to point out, you just kind of get a bit sick of it. It's it's more a supporters thing. They come up to you, oh, we played 16 or we played 12 or, or whatever. The ref was against us and he did a rat crap job and so on and so on and so on. And I thought, well, hang on, let's just think about it. You know, the, the referee doesn't knock the ball on. The referee doesn't get the... Uh, do the raise the stubs studs and go in shin high on a tackle on football and so on. So it wasn't particularly picking on any any different code. It was just overall. I just think the referees get a bit of a bum rap and they don't. They just referee it as they see it. Well, you hope they do. Um, and hey, it's the players who make the mistakes, eh? Hey? And uh, but the referees have got to have the balls too. That if there's a big decision to be made right at the end of the game, whether it be a penalty or or whatever. They have to make those decisions. So uh, that was all. That was all it was really about. And yeah, you got to look. Without referees, umpires, officials, whatever you want to call them, we don't have games, do we? Or we don't have a very good game. Let's put it that way. Yeah, great call, Coggy. And I've seen you know, games of club rugby where where neither neither side has been happy with the referee and this and that. But we just have to we just have to support the referees a bit more. I feel and get off their back a bit at the moment. I think they're feeling the heat a little bit. So everyone out there listening, get off the back of the refs, including coaches. Managers, supporters, everyone, uh, just let them do their job. Yep. So stop and whinging about. Charles, I think the um, the referees, uh, sorry, the coaches are, are very good towards the referees. They're they're quite um, thoughtful about how you know their criticisms and so on. It's it's more so the spectators and so on, and they just they just don't know the rules, eh? They just don't. They're not close enough to know the rules. And uh, hey, referees aren't perfect, and and there's some very bad habits by referees. Uh, and you want to see get, get them out of the game. But anyhow, um, that's my little bit of a rant. Yeah, no, thank you, and uh, and we'll see, Coggy. I really like the article now. Uh, in the local first fifteen competition, Makota first fifteen get up thirty six to seventeen versus uh, Waikol second fifteen, and also uh, Rathkill first uh, second fifteen fifty points to seventeen over Kudanui, uh first fifteen. That game was a lot closer than uh, what the scoreline shows, though, Charlesy. Now that typical call from the coach. Yeah, typical coach call. Now, now uh, there was a couple of real standout players in this game. It's the only game I went to was the Kudanui Rathkill game. Um, you want to say a little bit about the number ten for Rathkill? Yeah, Jake Jonas, uh, the number ten for Rathkill. Know Jake very well from the cricketing fraternity. Uh, a member of the Wadarapa Senior Men's representative side. A fantastic young cricketer who got a, a great seventy odd against Hawks Bay this season. He's a, a huge talent on the cricket yep. field, but obviously a huge talent on the rugby field as well. Um, and Jake here, yeah, he, he's, he comes from a, a sporting family. His parents, Mark and Susan, are, are both very good sports people. So yep. uh, he's got a couple of <laughs> yeah, the younger brothers too that are coming through the ranks. So that's a family to watch out for around the wider upper. Yeah, great goal kicker, great kicker as well. But um, during that game, Charles, he ran the ball and he kicked probably twice during the game and, and Rathkeel um, we're looking really sharp in the back line because of him. And also JJ Gillies, uh, he continues to shine for Kurunui College number eight too. Yeah, fantastic. Kurunui have got a, a much a great spirit this season, I'm yep. noticing, amongst that side. So keep it up, fellas. Okay. Now, uh, Charlesy was hit up a few times during the week. So was I about not covering senior reserves last week, Charlesy. So here we go. Yeah, look, and it was all your fault last week. You left it off the schedule. And I got the wrath in the club rooms on Saturday about it. So there's about 160 registered senior reserve players and they, they form a massive important cog yeah. in our club rugby. And that competition is a great competition. So there's some entertaining games that go on there. It's really yeah. good to watch. So, uh, yeah, as I say, supporters, don't just turn up for the A's game. Get there early and watch some really good rugby. Yeah, let's go through some results here. So um, uh, the replay of last year's final, East Coast versus Greytown, what happened? Well, 24-15 to the Coasties. They came to Greytown. Greytown, the Prowlers got up early, but the Coasties came home strong and took that one. So well done to the Coasties. You've edged yourself up on that table. Yeah, Maris get up versus Gladstone, 24-14. That game was brutal as well. Yeah, I've watched Maris play a brutal style they play there, um, but good win over Gladstone. Uh, here we have Tuharangi, a massive win, 64-12 Smashed. Smashed over, Martin over your, your team, Martin Burr. Not uh, my team, not well, my team. Well, you know, half your relations play for them. Well, them look, yeah, Lee Harley, the manager, there's some questions to be asked there. Um, we'll cover that shortly, though. Uh, also, Marston and Red Star, 55-19 over Pioneer. 
And in a really close encounter, Carterton get up over Hooker Toy, 15 points yeah, to 10. Out there, great win for Carterton there, who have got a, a awesome coaching and management staff there yeah. for their reserves and about 25 players named for today's match. So they're going really well. That's right. Now, here's the problem for Martinborough Reserves, Leith Harley. Um, the manager, uh, his team's struggling at the moment. And what does Leith do? He goes to the Bluff Oyster Festival. So, Leith, if you're watching this, please bring some oysters home for us because me and Charles, we absolutely love them. And there's a bit of a story about a Maui camper van that almost ended up in um, one of the lakes down south there as well. But ask Leith about that himself. Maybe we get him on the show, he can explain it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, now into the table, Charlesy. How's it looking for the senior reserves? Yeah, it's it's a, it's congested. I'd say it was congested all season. We've got Tuhurangi out in front on 17, Master and Red Star and Carterton on 15, and three teams on 11, Greytown, Pukatoi, Master and Marist. But Pukatoi and Master and Marist have a game in hand that'll be played on, on Queen's, Queen's birthday, birthday weekend. weekend. So they, they've got an opportunity to jump up there. Well, one of those teams are going to make that top four as well by, by having a win on Queen's birthday weekend. Well, look, you know, Glad but Gladstone and East Coast aren't out of it on 10 and 9. Uh, Pioneer and Martinborough down the bottom, but they're playing yep. this weekend. That'll be a great match to watch. Yep, they are. Now, okay, into the games for this weekend. Pukatoi, they play uh, host East Coast. Uh, in the next game, Pioneer uh, hosting Marty. This is the bottom of the table clash. Wooden Spooner, this is going to be an absolute classic. And Leith Harley is back as well. So that Yeah, that's played at Pioneer. I'm expecting a massive, massive performance from the Pioneer Reserves there. Okay, Maris, they host Tuarangi. And uh, Gladstone host Greytown and Carterton host Masterton Stars. I think that could be the match of the round at Carterton there against yep. Red Star. Yep. Okay, not for the pick the score, though, just for the senior reserves. That's now, great. okay, results from last week's Moose Carpenter Cup round. Childsy, the Nun Shield, Maris get up 31-23. Coggy, you're at this game. Can you give us a little, um, uh, your, your spin on what happened? A uh, pretty scrappy sort of game, actually. Uh, Maris, too good in the end, though. Their set piece was very good. Uh, front row was outstanding. Uh, Jeremiah Marpasua and uh, the other big prop, uh, Stan Smith. And then uh, and at the back, uh, sorry, Stan Wright, and at the back, uh, Shannon Rimini Albrecht had, a, had an outstanding game at number eight. But just, just too good, and they just wore Gladstone down in the end and uh, came away pretty deserved winners. Yeah, yeah, spot on, Coggy. And I thought Pua Tuffer uh, in the centres for Maris added, added a little bit more direction as well, which they, they were missing over the uh, past couple of weeks. Um, Greytown versus East Coast, 34 to 15. Charlesy, was this a little bit closer than what the scoreline suggests? Definitely. Coastie's up 15, 14 and a half time and sticking it to the Greytown team. Absolutely. Um, Greytown didn't really react that well in the first half to what, what hit them. Um, much better second half from Greytown. Uh, kept Coastie scoreless. Big defence on the goal line from Greydown to keep Coasties out there. So, yeah, but that was a very competitive match, closer than what that scoreline suggests. Yeah, now, Carterton, Charlesy, last week you said Carterton were in for a massive surprise. However, I think the surprise was on Ekerahuna here. Um, Carterton really had an uh, opportunity to win this game. A couple of missed kicks. If the sun and the moon lined up in different angles, they could have won this game. Yeah, I picked Ecky by 20, but only wind up the Carterton team. Hopefully they, they get away with the win. <laughs> but, um, yeah, look, great performance from Carterton. And, and Ecky... Yeah, look, too close to call in the end of that game. Yep. Um, it could have gone either way. Both sides really, you know, had, had their excuses. But, yeah, that this is the, the thing about this competition. Uh, any team could knock another team over. You've got to expect the unexpected. Okay, talking about the unexpected, 25 points to five at half time. Martin Burrow lead Pioneer. I don't know what happened at half time with Pioneer, but they've come back and won 27 to 25. And it's the first win for Pioneer for many of years. Been out of this competition. You're going to introduce our next guest to the show, and he's going to tell us how this all finished. I am, and it's, it's a big welcome to uh, on a Saturday morning, uh, live from the worksite in his hivers. I think he might have jumped into his uh, his vehicle there somewhere. It's the captain of the Pioneer Premier side, John T. Miller. Morena, bro. Morning, boys. How's it going? Yeah, good. Yeah, we're great, John T. Look, first of all, congratulations on what must have been uh, epic scenes down in Martinborough. Um, look, Tippy Hyder, his 100th game for the Martin Bar Prems, and you spoiled the party. And I, and I, I heard his, his youngest brother scored the winning try. Uh, with his, can, you, uh, can you tell us what happened at, at the end of the game there? Uh, yeah, well, firstly, um, big ups to Tippy on his 100th game, eh? Um, 100 games, Premier game commitment to the club. Yeah, so it was a, we had a last play, and an hour 22. And um, we ended up going all the way down to the try line. I think I counted 24 phases. 
And um, yeah, if it was to win it, no kick required. So that was good. But um, oh mate, yeah, twenty four phases a and uh, tough finish for us. Yeah, awesome, buddy. A, a fairy tale finish with twenty four phases, four minutes over time. We heard and and the winning try. Um, look, I think this is a, a, a great thing for the competition, uh, John T. And and I, I really praise you and and your leadership along with uh, some of your other senior players, your coaches, and your management group there this season. And we'll come back and talk to you a little bit later on about that in the show. Cool. Now, hey, let's get into the table, uh, the competition table. I know it's only early days, Charlesy, but there's a few. T- when you say it's early days, there's only five rounds left. There is. Oh, I actually don't think it's early days. I think mm. this week yep. is uh, very, very important for all the teams. Uh, you've, you're looking at a break on Queen's Birthday weekend, which then it's only another five games. And if you don't get a win in the first two, the, the acid's really on. So I, so I deem this weekend to be very, very important yep. for the uh, Premier competition. Yeah, that's right. And again, great to see Piney um, out in the top four straight away as well. Um, and the first game, talking about pressure, Gladstone versus Martinborough. Um, both teams desperate for a win here. Yeah, they are, and I haven't I haven't seen either side in the actual competition, only pre-season, which counts for nothing. So, Coggy, can we switch over to you and get your opinion on this match for Saturday? For Saturday? Yeah, um, it's, I reckon it's a real banana skin for Martinborough. Uh, talking to James Bruce during the week, he might have a few issues with uh, putting a full-strength side out there. And uh, if there's one team that can really get under their skin, especially if it's a bit sticky underfoot and uh, wet overhead, it is uh, Gladstone. I think they've, they've got the forwards and the likes of Andrew McLean, Andrew Smith, uh, Ryan Nell and so on, who would relish those conditions. So I think uh, Martinborough could be in for a hard day. Um, toss a coin, he's going to win it, though. But I think if, if there's going to be one that... Uh, could be the upset. It could be this game, and it could be Gladdy. Yeah, well said, uh, Coggy. Ekerahuna versus East Coast in the next game. Who you got on this, Charles? I, I, I'd have to back in Ekerahuna, but Coast under a bit of pressure here. They wouldn't want to drop two games. Well, we're talking to Chuck during the week. You know, it's going to be the sludge up there in Ekerahuna, and he feels it might not necessarily suit his team, believe it or not. Uh, may suit the Coasties more. The Coasts were very abrasive against Greytown last week up front, and they had a very good defence, and they were well structured there uh, on defence. So I feel if they can produce the coast style, could upset Ekerahuna a bit. Uh, a lot will come down to the tactics of both teams in this game, I believe, with the conditions. Yep. So I, I predict this game to be reasonably close, but I would say Ekerahuna to come out on top, uh, but not by much. Yep, yep. Very good. Now, Carterton versus Greytown. They host uh, Greytown. I think this game is going to be an absolute cracker. Coggy, you've watched both of these sides play this year. Can you give us a little bit of input into this? Well, Greydown absolutely smoked them last time, and they really should have beaten them by 30 points. In the end, it was only by it was only by 10, but uh, they just kind of went to sleep a little bit in that last quarter. I, I don't think they're going to Carterton are going to fall into that tra- that trap this time. They've got Lockie McFadgen back. He'll come off the bench. He'll add a lot of steel to them, especially in the second half. Big loss though for Carterton is Ania Cartier. I just think Greydown though just a bit too overall consistent, and I think uh, that will prove the distance in the end. Yeah, Coggy, I'd, I'd perhaps like to add that Lockie McFadgen might actually be starting this game. All the, that's what that's what's come out on Facebook uh, this morning. Yeah. So I believe I believe he is a, a vital cog in that in that tight five for Carterton. He adds a lot of experience. He's a very good player. So I, I'm predicting a much better performance from the Carterton forward pack. Uh, they've got Francis Muller at number eight, um, Jack O'Hull's in there. So I, I think they're stacking their forward pack for a battle in the early part of this match, and it's going to be hell for leather in this game. Yeah, um, well said. How's your injuries, Charlesy? Yeah, we still got Chris Hemi and Dominic Hurley here out, uh, but both those players may be available in a couple of weeks' time. So we're, we're starting to, you know, get over the bumps and bruises yep. a little bit. So yeah, things are looking a little bit better. Okay, Maris, they host Pioneer Memorial Park number two at two thirty-five. There's a bit going on here, Charlesy. First of all, we've got Maris Old Timers Day. We do the Nun Shield. Is up for grabs. The Nun Shield. And also... And the Warwick Goodger Memorial Trophy. Yep. So it's a big day there at Marist uh, for this match. Uh, John T, let's cross over to you again, mate. Um, could you tell us a little bit about... It, there's clearly been some changes this season at Pioneer with, with coaching, management, etc. Could you tell us a little bit about what's happened and, and how you feel you've, you're turning the corner? Um, yeah, no, definitely. Um, with... Uh, whole new coaching staff and management team this year. I've um, really come in and 
or just say, Shh, you know, really looking after us. You know, it's kind of made us a lot of a type. I feel than last year, you know, the boys are really looking out for each other and, you know, we, we really want to do it for our club, not so much just ourselves. Yeah, bro, that's that's a good point. I Look, mean, I, I, and you, you, you obviously, um, in your uh, top players each week, you give a 3-2-1 point system away. John, do you, I believe you gave your three points away to your supporters last week. Sorry, fellas, I didn't catch that. What oh. was that one? <laughs> Now, Jonty, last week you gave the three points to your top player to your supporters. Is that correct? All right, we've got a technical glitch with Jonty. <laughs> so we, we're going to carry on, Chelsea, and we're going to go yeah. straight into... That's correct. Um... Okay, we're going to go... Thanks, Jonty. We're going to go straight into the uh, Pick the School competition. $1,000. Well, this is the game of the round, Maris Pioneer. Um, yeah, Jonty did confirm that that was actually yes. the case, that uh, the three points was to the Pioneer supporters. And look, what I want to see is on Saturday at Maris, Pioneer, the whole Pioneer club turns up um, there. It'll be a great day at Maris. They've got the one o'clock reserve game at Jean Street. So I'm guessing at about 2.30, they're going to flood through the gates at Memorial Park. And um, it's going to be a massive game there at Maris too. Massive game. Massive game. Coggy's going to be there to watch it. You'll probably be there too. Yep. Match of the round in my book as well. So... Look, you could is... win $1,000, but not only $1,000, an oversized check to go with it as well, Chaudzi. You will if you can pick the score. So get your, get your selections down below right now, people. This will be an epic encounter. Marista have strengthened up their Ford pack recently with a few yep. more additions there. And, uh, you know, pretty cock -a hoop from what Beachy says. So, you know, they're going to be tough to roll. But Pioneer with confidence now. Yeah, and, tails and, up. Uh, tails up with a win at the top of the table. Yeah. This will be an epic encounter. Look, um, unfortunately, John D, I've got Maris by two, but good, really, good luck for the game today. Oh, look, I, I think if you're looking at it on paper, Maris at home should win, but you never know. The, the Pioneer boys with their tails up. Coggy, what do you reckon? Uh, I agree with you, Childsy. I, th I think uh, if Pioneer can get uh, get a flow going and get be disruptive and so on, uh, yeah, they've got what it takes to uh, win this game. And they've got guys like Nakora Iwi, they've got Jonty, who have been playing outstandingly. Uh, Iwi uh, Ihi Namana at uh, number eight had a, had a great game last week, according to uh, James Bruce and uh, the Martinborough coach and Colty Whitaker, the Pioneer coach. So, yeah, I, I kind of like Pioneer to cause a bit of an upset. But, hey, I'm not going to be surprised uh, either way. I think it's going to be a great weekend of uh, rugby, very close games, and the conditions will level things out a little bit. Now, Coggy, I'm also at the game as well today, so how about me and you, um, you do your 3 two, one point system and I'll do mine and we'll see how they match up at the end of the game, yeah? Yeah, mate, I do mine watching the game. I don't sit in the bar and, and try and work it out <laughs> afterwards, though. <laughs> yes, Coggy, that's exactly what happens. Um, just, just one thing I didn't note between the Greytown and Carterton matches is played for a couple of cups and very special to both clubs. The Toyota Cup and the Reed Cup uh, are on, on the line as well. So the Toyota Cup is in memory of Finn Yeats, who uh, sadly passed away um, a few years ago. So a lot to play for in, in those at the Carterton Rugby Club this weekend. Yep. And that leads us into the What About You campaign, Charlesy. Are you okay? Oh, I'm okay, mate. That's good. I'm just checking in. That's great. Look, um, is your phone charged? Yes. Good. And look, when you give, give that shot of tequila there, you can say no way. I can definitely say no. Yep. The What About You campaign is, is not always about not drinking. It's just drinking responsibly and looking after your mates. So yep. I think we've got an example of this. Yeah, we, uh, do, we do have a good, good example here. This, yeah, can this, you just zoom in there, Pesca, on this? Well, this, look, this is a bit. Now, these four lads, look, they played golf last uh, Friday at the Wadarapa Sports Education Trust annual Ambrose tournament at the Masters and Golf Club. Their, their syndicate's called Drink Shoeys. So they have a share in a greyhound called Drink Shoey. But they also share each other's shoes to have well, a they, well, drink they drink, they the drink the out of each other's shoes. So look, I suppose it's looking after your mates. Brad Chittick must be involved in this one. Well, he is in that photo yeah. along with Warren Burling and Liam Burling and Jason LaGrove. Sorry to name drop fellas, but look, I think it's a, a, an example of guys looking after each other, yeah. um, drinking out of each other's shoes during a round of golf. But look, very responsible men. Didn't yeah. certainly get out of hand during the day. So that's what it's all about. Look after your mates. Don't get silly. Get a taxi home or organise a taxi ride. And let's um, keep really keep working on this. Okay. I want to mention a very special happy birthday to uh, uh, a good friend of mine, James Goodger. He had his birthday through the week. So happy birthday, Goodgy. He is also the AR at the Marist Pioneer game. 
Oh, could you? Oh, no, he is. Oh, he'll do a great job. He'll do a fantastic job too. Yeah. So, uh, hey, thanks for watching the show. We're just going to finish with a little bit of uh, James Good Your Magic. You're probably going to be sick of this. Uh, however, I'm going to keep playing it. And I play it to myself uh, every night before I go to sleep. Thanks, Coggy. Thanks. In some deep <laughs> thanks, John here. D, bro. Come on, thanks, guys, for hey, being on the show. If he doesn't Come on, John T. That's it. Come on, John T. You're blocking Good You're blocking Good Come on, John Get those Pioneer guys up. Get them up for a boat. Turn around, just watch it for me. Look, Look he's turned your sound off, John T. He's turned your sound off. He doesn't want you to say anything. The best part of this video is just the walk off from Greytown here. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jack. Good job. This is the rising today, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.